VSS9 is very similar to VSS8. <clears throat> there are a couple of differences, and we want to go over those now. When you go to the file menu after you've installed the program, you can open a new analysis and a new report. So if I want to open an existing analysis, I go to open and I click on analysis and I can search my directory for files. If I'm opening a value source 8 file, it will open inside of the framework and it will split off from the VSS8 file. It will leave a copy of the file on the computer. Um, but you cannot go backwards. You can't work on it in VSS9 and then go backwards to VSS8. Um, another important aspect of the file open menu is, is the report writer. So when you want to open a report, you need to come down to the open report. And when you open the report this way, it will be connected to what's inside of the analysis file. You can check this by going to the Tools Manage Workbooks. Now, one of the benefits about having the new VSS9 has to do with the report writer and the analysis file. You can open more than one analysis file at the same time. So if I go back to the home screen and I click on Analysis, I can open up the sample project as well as the project that I have open. By having two projects open, I can compare those if I want to. The issue with doing it this way is, is trying to determine which window the report is connected to. And so as long as you understand, you go to the Tools Manage Workbooks, and you'll be able to see which file you're connected to. Uh, you should have no problems and realize that you can have more than one report open and you can have more than one analysis file open. Another thing that you should be aware of is, is that when we edit in native Excel, a box will come up. This box won't close on you. But what's going on here is, is that our software is using a spreadsheet and it's translating that spreadsheet into Microsoft Excel. And so when I make my changes inside of Excel, you know, I make that bold or I change whatever it is that I want to, to change it to, and then I press keep changes, those changes will be brought back into the software. Now there are a few things that do not work. One is uh, if I insert pictures or shapes into the spreadsheet. Um, also be aware that the, the, the charts are a little different um, going back and forth. Uh, Two-dimensional charts are what is able to be used inside of the, um, inside of the software. Let me drive to a particular schedule. I go to the word view, and then I make sure my page setup is turned on, and you'll see a tab at the top of the schedule. When I click on the page setup, I get all of the options that we have. This is the same options that we would have had inside of ESS8 had we gone to the analysis menu and dropped it down to um, page setup. Also, you have the ability to do a print preview tab. And so if I click on the print preview tab over here, I can see what's going to be printed out and I can go next and previous uh, and, and refresh and see what's going to happen and print it from here as well. I also have the ability to drop the file menu down and go print and I can select which schedules I want from there. And let's talk about databases. If I go to a schedule, that requires data. So let's assume that I'm looking at the value source market comps. Up on top, there will be a button that says VS market comps and I click that up there and it will launch my data. I can then put in my SIC code and press search. All of the 152s come over here. If there's one I don't want to download into the system, I uncheck market. At this point, I'll click on data 
and I'll get that information downloaded into the file. I can also go to the home screen and click on data, go to value source market comps, and search this way. But when I do that, you'll notice that the selection over here is no longer there. And when I click on data, I'm going to generate an Excel sheet with the data. It will not automatically come into the project file unless I launch it from the project file. Some of the other things that have occurred inside of the file is, is that some of the older data sets are no longer uh, included. For instance, on the business profile, we no longer have the NAICS SIC database. You have to type those in um, on your own. Uh, SBBI data is no longer inside of here as well. If you want to input that information, you'll have to do it manually. When we open, our, we can use the window button to go into the report. The biggest change with the report writer is, is that we're now using fields instead of text. So what does this mean to you as the user? It means that um, the fields you can type inside of, and it will keep that. However, if we update that field, and you can update a single field by clicking on this icon here, it will erase what's in there and replace it. Now, how do you tell which are fields and which are not? So if I come over here and I go to view and I click on fields, you can tell what's being updated. So in this case here, I have 20144. Obviously, that's a mistake in the year. How do I fix that? I can use this icon here to go back to the file I'm attached on and see what it's supposed to say. Come over here to the report writer, and I do that by going through the the window menu, and then I can click on update all of the links, or I can click on update the single link, and that report now will be updated. Um, when I do update the entire report, we get this interesting schedule that comes up. It'll tell us how many cells, ranges, and charts we've been able to update. We can lock a particular cell or range, and we can bring it over as color. So when we, uh, when we look at this report, we'll be able to tell that these are all of, the different, all of the different cell references that are coming into the report. This is the value that came into the report. And if I want to lock those, I can press lock on them. And then those will never change, even though I hit the update all command. And I can sort and uncheck mark them to unlock them. What does this mean? This means that I can look through my report and see what values are coming through and can get back to them fairly easily. What happens here is, is that up on top, we have a locked and an unlocked. And I said that backwards. Up on top here, we have a locked with the check mark. We can unlock it by uncheck marking it. Instead of having the navigator in the report writer, we have the next link. We have go to the link that I have my cursor on, and we have go to the previous link. And in this case here, there was no link before it, so it came up with the message. The other thing you should know about using fields inside of Word is, is that you can go out and research how fields work, but if you press the Alt and the F9 key at the same time, you'll be able to see our underlying code. So we're going to go to the report writer B3 to bring in the child's clothing store name. Let me show you a couple of really cool things that we've done with the report writer. If I'm over here on child's clothing store, I can do an add quick link. When I do this, I can put in the word like a range name and it will bring that across. Then what happens is when I'm in the report writer window, I can use that link. So if I'm at a particular place and I want to use my quick link, I just click on it and it'll say, which one do you want to use? I press company and it'll put the company name in that place. 
This allows you to assign the value once, but be able to use that several times. Company name is a great example of that.